Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Grade 11 Functions class. This is 5.4, evaluating trig ratios for any angle between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. So in the past we learned these definitions for sine, cos, and tan, cosec, sec, and cotan. Um, and they're really important because now we can define the trigonometric ratios using coordinates on the coordinate grid. So that means that if I have any angle in our coordinate grid, so this is the x and this is the y, I'm starting at my initial arm, that's this arm here, the positive x-axis. I start from there and I go to anywhere, let's call this theta 1, I can still find the sine, cos, and tan. And that's really important because when we find them in quadrant 1, they're all acute angles. And you can make a right angle triangle with acute angles, but you can't make a right angle triangle with an obtuse angle. You can't have one right angle and one obtuse angle because that's going to add up to more than 180. So we had a big problem trying to find sine, cos, and tan for something like 120 before because it's too big to fit into a right angle triangle. So what we know is that instead of just trying to figure out what it is from this big arc, we're actually going to drop the perpendicular from the arm, the terminal arm, that's what it's called. Make this the perpendicular. And we're going to actually use this right angle triangle to do it. And we have to use the proper x and y, so that's why we have to choose this angle right here. This is going to be called the related acute angle, alpha. Related acute angle. And so that is how we do find all of the sine, cos, and tan for, any, for anything that we want. So actually I'll call that alpha 1 because I'm going to have to do another one. So if I wanted to do it for quadrant 3 here, here's quadrant 3, this was quadrant 2, <laughs> that's the one we missed. So let's call this alpha 2, or sorry, theta 2, then again I'm going to have to drop the perpendicular to the x-axis, so never to the y-axis, and then I can find my related acute angle, and that's going to help me to find the sine, cos, and tan for this big angle, this reflex angle. And I can do the same for quadrant 4 as well. So that is really, really helpful. And if you're not really sure what I'm talking about, that's okay. We're gonna, I'm going to do some examples, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's do an example. We're going to try the cos of 225 degrees, which is a nice big number. Um, and we want to know the exact value, so we can't just use our calculators for it. Um, so one of the first things I want to talk about, though, before we jump into the question is cast. Cast is basically a mnemonic to help us remember what is positive where, okay? And y I can show you the construction for cast later, but um, let's just talk about how to use it. This is C-A-S-T, and it just tells us that all of the trig ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Only sine is positive in quadrant 2, as in tan and cos are negative, but sine is positive. In quadrant 3, tan is positive, but sine and cos are both negative. And in quadrant 4, cos is positive, but sine and tan are negative. So we're going to put this into practice and find cos 225. So the first thing we want to do is draw it out. So cos 225 degrees, we know that this is 90, this is 180, and this is 270. So 225, that number is between 180 and, and 270, so it's somewhere like this. I'm not really sure exactly where. So I'm just going to just draw some random lines, so it's clearly in quadrant 3. So this is our 225, and we can write quadrant 3 right here. Now quadrant 3 tells us that this this cos is going to be negative because in quadrant 3 only tan is positive so immediately I can write negative cos and then I'm going to find the related acute angle so right here I'm going to put the related acute angle the alpha and to find that again I'm going to drop the perpendicular to the x axis always to the x and I'm going to find this angle you can see that this angle alpha is going to be 225, this whole thing, minus 180. So that ends up being 45 degrees. So we'll write 45 in here. Okay, and now we know it's that cos 225 is going to be equal to negative cos 45 degrees, and cos 45 degrees is one of the things from our chart, so it's actually negative root 2 over 2, and that's our solution. 
So you could pause the video now and do cos 150 degrees, um, and I will also. So I'm going to solve it for you as as I go. So if you want to pause, pause now, and then I will start. So cos 150 degrees. Again, the first thing that you want to do is you want to draw it out. So this is 90, 180, 270. So 150. That's between 90 and 180. So it's something like this. It's closer to 180 than 90. So you can draw it in. That's 150 degrees. So I know I'm in quadrant 2. Quadrant 2, and this is cosec. Cosec is 1 over sine. So I know that this is going to be positive cosec, and then whatever my related acute angle is. The related acute angle in this case, alpha, is going to be 180 minus 150, because that's just this little section right here. So 180 minus 150, that is equal to 30 degrees. So cosec of 30 degrees. If you look in your chart, you can see that cosec 30 degrees is 2. So the answer is positive 2. Now we're going to go the opposite way. So we're going to start with the ratio, and we're going to have to find our angle. So the first thing we want to do is find the related acute angle. To do that, we're going to make it the ratio positive. That's because when you type in something negative, actually, I don't know what you're going to get because different calculators do different things. If you type in the positive version, you will always get an acute angle. So we're going to type in the positive version to find alpha, our related acute angle. So do that. When you type that into your calculator, tan inverse of 7 over 24, you should get 16 degrees. If you don't get 16 degrees, it's probably because either you weren't in degrees or you didn't use brackets for the 7 over 24, so just be careful about that. Um, so that gives us our alpha. And now that we know that, we can use cast to find our actual answers, because this is the quadrant 1 answer. I want to know the answers for when tan is negative, and so it's not going to be 16 degrees. So cast looks like this. Cast. And Oop, I did that wrong. It does not look like that. It looks like this cast. Make sure you start in the fourth quadrant, not the first quadrant. And so because tan is positive in this quadrant and this quadrant, we don't want them. We do want to be when tan is negative, which is here and here. So we want the quadrant 2 and quadrant 4 answers. So you can draw this out if you like. Um, usually you shouldn't have to once you practice a lot, but I'm just going to do it for our purposes. So we should get something that looks like this, where this is 16 degrees, that's our related acute angle, and this part is our theta, so that's one of our solutions. And then we're going to get a second solution in quadrant 4, where this is 16 degrees, and our angle is this big thing right here, okay? So that would be our theta, our new theta. So we get two solutions here, one in quadrant 2 and one in quadrant 4. Quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. Okay, so how we're going to do that is we're just going to do theta equals 180 minus 16, because you can see it goes to 180, and we subtract off 16, which is going to be 164 degrees. And we're also going to do the quadrant 4 answer, which is 360 minus 16, 360 minus 16, which gives us 344 degrees. So we have two solutions, 164 and 34 deg 344 degrees, one in quadrant 1, or 2, and one in quadrant 4. So you can pause the video. I have two more examples, one on this page and one on the next page. You can go ahead and try them. Um, I'm going to start them right away. So if you'd like to pause, pause now. Okay, so cos theta equals one-third means that this is already positive. So when I type it into my calculator, I should get a positive number. Um, so if you do cos inverse of one over three, you're going to get 71 degrees, okay? So this is the quadrant one answer. Remember that cast means that we're going to be positive in more than one quadrant. So you can't just write 71 degrees and be happy with that. We know that cos is positive in fourth quadrant and also in the first quadrant. So we have one answer, and this is our related acute angle, and then we're going to have to find our, four, our quadrant four answer. So for quadrant four, we know that this is going to be 71 degrees, so the whole thing is going to be our theta. So theta is equal to 360 minus 71 degrees, 
which is 289 degrees. So that's one solution, and of course we have our quadrant one solution, which is 71 degrees. Okay, two answers. Okay, last example. So again, we have a negative number, so we're going to make that into a positive. So seek alpha is equal to 5 over 3. Don't forget to change it to be the related acute angle. Seek isn't on our calculator, so we would actually like, to do, like it to be a primary trig ratio. So I'm going to change it to the cos, because seek is 1 over cos. So cos alpha is equal to, and then we're going to flip this over, so 3 over 5, like this. And then we can use our calculator, cos inverse of 3 over 5. And I haven't done that yet, so cos inverse of 3 over 5, which is 53 degrees. And that's going to be our alpha. So we want, f we want it such that cos is negative in this case. So we need to be C-A-S-T in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. So in quadrant 2, my answer is 180 minus 53 degrees which is 127 degrees and in quadrant 3 our answer is 180 plus 53 degrees so 233 degrees so again we get two solutions and that's our answer so thanks for watching ask me any questions you have in class and I will see you soon